Hello and welcome to another episode of Design Under Influence. Uh, we are here broadcasting to you from uh, different locations, but from a, a same company, same organization. We are Arc IT. We help, help architecture designers and engineers, professionals and companies with their IT support. Um, look, that's our passion. That's what we do for work. And uh, we want to uncover some of these topics and bring about more of a common questions and tickets, support tickets we get all the time to help you on the other end, if you're watching, to kind of understand how to go about a potential problem you're having. Today, today's problem we've isolated is application versioning. Harry is one of our engineers here, Zaheen as well. Uh, they've been with Arc IT for a while, been in the trenches, done the work, understand exactly how the plumbing works, uh, as well as conceptually understand how to put everything together. So we're going to start with application version. Maybe, Harry, if you can list out some of the applications we've had that architects you are using that we've had the most trouble with different versions and, and the conflicts between the versions. Off the top of my head, I would probably say Revit is the main one that we come across. Um, and it could just be that it's Revit is more of a, the dominant graphics software for Microsoft Windows, which is the dominant um, computer platform out there. Um, so in our case, Revit is the most, but we also do get uh, reports of versioning issues from other softwares like Autodesk, ActiCAD, um, Vectorworks, Adobe, Pretty much the entire suite of softwares that um, architects use, there has to be some kind of um, um, application version and management that goes along with it. I got you. And Zahin, before before this uh, recording, you and I talked a little bit about kind of what, how do the, how do the problems manifest? Why does it matter? I mean, I'm sure on the other end, if you guys deal, dealt with it, you understand it, but. Let's go a little bit deeper into some of the conflict, some of the issues that we get through our ticket line. Uh, what's some of the most common issues that we, we're hearing with, with this, Zaheen? So I would say one of the most common issues um, and also one of the most time consuming issues is with uh, specifically Autodesk Connector app. So what that is, it's it's kind of like a, uh, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Harry, but it's like a BIM uh, platform where there's a lot of like cloud sharing. Um, people can open up multiple, I mean, people can open open up the same file at once and just kind of collaborate on it at the same time. So it's a very useful app to have, but uh, due to the application versioning, when a new feature update comes out or if people aren't on the same uh, update, then that can cause a lot of conflicts. So the uh, the main problem with the application versioning on Autodesk Connector app is that it's a lengthy process to uh, get it uninstalled and reinstalled um, with the newest update, because it's not as simple as just click on it, update, everything works. No, it's uh, it's about like a 45 minute process, 30, 30 to 45 minute process uh, per machine. Um, so basically what we have to do is, uh, we do have to uninstall it. We have to, and sometimes we have to wipe some registry files. Sometimes there's like very specific folders we need to delete, uh, before we reinstall the, the newer version. And, uh, yeah, it just causes a lot of conflicts. Um, and it, and there is a vetting process that needs to take place before, uh, you know, all this prep, um, that needs to be done before we can like get everybody on the same version and get everyone back to working again. So the problem comes about when one of the users or several of the users are on the ecosystem on the network update on their own? Yeah. Okay. So no, your advice to architects who have IT support is what? Do not update on your oh. <laughs> oh, Go ahead, Zahir. So, uh, I mean, yeah, the main thing is just to don't update on your own. Um, there are certain things that you can update on your own, but I think you should just leave it to your IT team to tell you what you can update, what you can't update. Because if you can update it, uh, I mean, it's it's very easy just to give, give you know, whoever your IT support provider uh, is a call and just, hey, can I update this? Or, hey, can you like, uh, you know, provide the administrative password so that we can update this, you know, boom, bam, that's it. Uh, but on the uh, on the more complicated side of it, 
just updating on your own can cause a lot of conflicts. Like uh, there are certain apps where it'll it'll pull a file that everybody's working on and convert it to like a, a different version, it makes it unusable for other people. It's just, uh, yeah, it's not worth doing. Got you. Harry, talk to us too, too about, about Revit and some other design tools that are heavy, heavy design tools that are, you know, responsible for everyday productivity. They're, you know, you're running the projects through them. What's some of the issues that we've seen and how to avoid them? Yeah, it's it's basically, so it comes down to that idea of the fact that most architects collaborate on files. It's just natural. It's, you know, just going to be one person working on these parts, one person working on ceilings, one person working on flooring. So every project is going to have multiple cooks in the kitchen. Um, you want everybody to be on the same version, no matter what application you're using. Depend, different architects, depending on their on their technical infrastructure, depending on if they're a Mac environment, if they're a Windows environment, there are different softwares available um, for them to use. Um, where uh, um, the IT, your IT comes in with better processes is making sure, being able to make sure that everyone who is working on a similar project are all on the same version. So it's very easy for a user to see a, a, a prompt for an update on their Revit or their Vectorworks and click go ahead and update. Um, so what, that ha what happens is whenever they open a file that they're sharing with other technicians or other architects, it's, it then upgrades that file. And when another architect goes to open up that file, that file is almost unusable. So what we do in our process is we make sure that users do not have admin rights to go ahead and apply those updates themselves. So we take away that control from users. So when an update comes out, it's our responsibility to go out there and do the research on that update to see what are the new bugs that comes with this update, what are the problems to foresee or plan for that's going to come with this update. When is a good time to apply the update? So we make a decision. We we get the clients involved, we do our research, and we make sure that everyone who is on the same software on the same project is upgraded at the same time so that they don't have conflicts with projects. So there's a there's an intensive process that goes with it. Um, and when that process is not followed, there could be multiple problems. Hmm. And so the problems I'm hearing, like with Revit, I think we talked again before the show, that um, someone... With Revit, it's it locks the project to a particular version of Revit. Is that correct? It upgrades it, so it would upgrade the project to that particular version, whatever the latest version. Whoever had the latest version of Revit, if they open up that project, it upgrades that file that draw it to that to that person's version. So it adds different functionalities to it, adds different hash marks to that thing. And someone with a lesser version may have trouble. So when they go to open up that file, they get an error. When they go to click on a component, they get an error. And they're like, hey, why is this not working? Then we look into it and it's, oh, you have a different version than this user. That's why the user can open up the file. So it could lead to a bunch of issues and proper management is necessary. So this is uniquely, almost I'd say uniquely architecture, design, and engineering, or AAC sort of issue because all these design tools are super heavy, super complex, uh, super flexible as well. And it sounds like if you're, you know, a plumber, or bookkeeper, you wouldn't have to deal with any of that because you know you're operating, right? Well, I, I would say it's it's a, it's a total. Whatever you use in applications in general, the the, the level of um, severity varies. Um, so if you're just using basic applications, like say maybe Word or Excel, it might not be that huge of a difference. But when you're an architect working with design uh, uh, applications, it's a big deal. Mm. So it, it's just, it varies in the severity, but application versioning matters in the industry in general. I see. Do most other IT companies, I know we, we specialize on architects uh, in this space. Do most other IT companies, that's one of the core offering for a lot of other MSP shops. Is that is that kind of how IT companies operate? For so, ahead, from, from my previous experience at, like, at a different MSP, um, we weren't really like, 
we don't we didn't expect those sort of things um, because we had like a few architectural companies that I was working for, but it was just a you know a few among the list of many companies that we were managing. So we weren't necessarily specializing in architecture or anything. So we just didn't know until it was too late. And by too late, I mean that you know like uh, they had already done something that they weren't supposed to have done. Um, but you know since we weren't really specializing in that in that field, we weren't looking into it. The damage had been done, and now we're trying to reverse it. You know, and now there's downtime, and now you know, like all this, all these extra expenses because we're billing them this time. So, us having the expertise, you know, we we look into these things beforehand. And if somebody has an issue, we use that uh, and we add that to our knowledge so that the next time that it happens, it won't happen. You know, or like we're we're prepared for it and we know what to expect. So. Yeah, I think that's the difference between us and a lot of other companies that manage architectural firms. So with the, the thing with IT is like, if everything's working, it's money well spent, you know, pay that bill. If things are just not working properly uh, and things are, th things are kind of crashing all the time and you think your IT guy is working hard, well, they're working hard, but at the cost of your productivity. Now, you want those issues prevented. And so that's one of the advantages here at Arc IT. It's not really a sales pitch, but it's the truth, right? So, you know, we operate in one industry, focus on solving one industry problems, and that's that's how we can surface this, these issues, potential issues before they become business disruptions. Um, yes. Let's finish. Let's polish this off with the, the latest thing. So, not only the, these heavy design applications are susceptible to this. Zahin, you and I talked about the Teams problem, or was it Harry? Whoever brought this up. That was Can you talk to me about new teams and what the situation is now. Yeah, so uh, the new teams um, and the Microsoft Teams. Sorry, I won't clarify. Yeah, Microsoft Teams, uh, and that comes hand in hand with uh, Outlook as well. Because there's a new Outlook, there's a new Teams, and uh, we've been seeing a lot of problems just coming from both. Um, and the thing with Microsoft is they're allowing people to test this out, quote unquote, test this out. Um, you know, just try the new Teams, try the new Outlook. But um, in my experience, I've I've switched to it. I switched back within like 30 minutes because mm -hmm. it was just some functionality that was missing. And I, I see a lot of these, uh, I'm getting a lot of tickets uh, from users that have switched to the new teams. We're even getting requests from management um, just to disable the option to even switch to the new teams. There there will come a time where we're being forced to uh, you know transition over. And that's just, it's just not going to be called new teams anymore. It's just going to be called teams. It's going to look completely different. But the reality is that there's still a lot of bugs um, in that, and uh, people unknowingly, you know, when they open up, they open their laptop up, they're starting their day, they click on Teams, and it's like, oh, hey, new version of Teams, would you like to try it out? And like most people just hit hit yes, you know, because that that button is like all colored, you know, nice rainbow colors, and then the other one is all gray, and you know, cancel, you don't want to click that. So, so uh, you know, it's a very appealing thing to to click on and try out, but in reality, uh, I've seen I've seen issues like you can't copy and paste in Outlook, can't copy and paste in Teams, like Outlook opens up a has its own web browser now or something when you click on links, and that. That doesn't play well with like auto save passwords and all this stuff. It just creates a lot of a lot of uh, turmoil. I would Friction. say, yeah, just uh, unpredictability and all this stuff. So, um, yeah, that's another issue with just you know clicking update right away or trying out the the latest and greatest when that's not always the case. Gotcha. So here's the wisdom. Let's wrap this up and say if you guys uh, and gals are watching this, helping you out, that's great. If you need help, call your IT department and ask them or IT team and ask them what your application versioning strategy is for your company. OK, and if they don't give you a good answer, you give us a call here at ArcIT. We're at GetArcIT.com. We're here to solve your technology problems so you can focus on doing your best work. Harry. I appreciate you. Zaheen, I appreciate you as well. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. I know you guys are engineers. You have a busy day. I thank you kindly for taking the time to share some stuff with us. And those of you watching, thank you very much for your time and attention. And we'll see you all next week.